Welcome back to Dezavi Productions. My name's Dezavi. Today, I'll be showing you how to navigate the MIDI editor inside of Pro Tools. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss a session. Without further ado, let's get to it. All right, guys, so here we have our session. There are two ways to access the MIDI editor. The first is the simplest way, and that's by double clicking one of the MIDI clips. So let's go ahead and double click on the drums here. And this opens the MIDI editor in a separate window. To open this window using the menu, we're gonna close the window here. We're gonna to go to the window tab in the menu and near the top middle, you're gonna see MIDI editor. We're gonna click here and this opens up that separate window. So that's the first way. We're gonna close this. Now the second way, we're gonna go down to the bottom left hand corner of the screen and you're gonna see a tab with the arrow pointing up. We're gonna click on that tab and this opens the MIDI editor at the bottom of the screen. We can make this bigger, we can make this smaller. And to open this view using the menu, we're gonna go ahead and collapse this again. We're gonna go to the view tab in the menu, go to other displays, and at the bottom of the list, you're gonna see MIDI editor. So we're gonna click here, and this opens up that view again. So for the sake of this tutorial though, we're gonna be using the separate window. So we're gonna collapse this, go to window, and open up the MIDI editor and this opens up that separate window. All right, let's go over what these buttons are and what they do. We're gonna start from the top left, work our way right across the top, and then work our way down. To see all the tools in the toolbar, we can right click anywhere in the open space here and go ahead and check in all of these options. There's one that I haven't checked in, I'm gonna do that right now, and we're ready to go. Starting off at the top left corner, the first button we have is the record enable button. Next, we have the solo button, followed by the mute button. And these three affect the entire session, not just the MIDI editor. To the right, we have a musical note. And when you click this, this displays your MIDI notes as a musical notation. So I'm gonna turn this off. To the right, we have a magnifying glass. And this right here is your zoomer tool. So I'm gonna click here, click in the editor, and it zooms you in. If you're a Mac user, hold the option key down on your keyboard and click again to zoom back out. Right clicking on the magnifying glass gives you access to the single zoom, which only zooms you in once as opposed to this one where it zooms you in continuously as you click. Moving on to the right here, we have the trim tool, which allows you to trim your MIDI notes at the end or the beginning. I'm gonna undo that. In the middle, we have the selector tool, which allows you to select parts of your MIDI clip. To the right of this, we have the grabber tool. The grabber tool allows you to grab MIDI notes and move them around wherever you want. And if you want to do multiple notes, you can simply click and drag to select multiple notes and move them around as you wish. I'm gonna undo that. Now, just outside the three tools here, you're gonna see a border and by clicking on it, you activate the smart tool. This allows you to use all three tools simultaneously. Now, please be advised that the way that these three tools work will be directly affected by what mode you're currently in. So if you're in shuffle, slip, spot, or grid, Whatever mode that you're in will determine how those tools edit your MIDI notes. So as an example, if we're in grid mode and we use the grabber tool, we're gonna to select these. And you can see that anywhere I put it, it will be snapped to the grid. Likewise, if I trim it, it will snap it to the grid, depending on how we have the grid divided. If we switch it over to slip mode, we can literally place these anywhere we want and it won't snap to the grid. Likewise, with the trim tool again, we can define exactly how we want these notes to be. I'm gonna undo this. So always be aware of what mode you're currently in. To the right of the grabber tool, we have the scrubber tool. So this allows you to scrub through your MIDI notes with your mouse as you click and hold it down. So we're gonna click here, hold it, and then drag it across and drag it back and drag it across, back, across. Okay, so that, that allows you to scrub through your MIDI notes. To the right of the scrubber tool, we have the pencil tool. This allows you to draw in MIDI notes manually. Now it only allows you to do it one key at a time. So if you try to go down like this, it's not gonna work. It's just gonna simply draw one long note in one key. So we can literally just let it go or just click once and it will draw in notes for us. Now how those notes are drawn will be dependent on what you have here to the right. So this little section here tells you what you're currently drawing into, what track. So right now we have it in drums. To the right here, we have the MIDI note duration, which tells you how long that note will be um, input. So let's say one bar. If we make a single click, it will draw a one bar worth of a note. 
if we switch, uh, switch this over to 16th note, it will draw in a 1 16th note. Now the number to the right here is a MIDI note velocity. So if we set it to 112, then the velocity of the note that is drawn in will be 112 and so on and so forth. Now there are multiple modes to the pencil mode. So let's say we're gonna go right click here and this gives you access to line, triangle, square, and random. More than anything, these affect the velocity of the notes that you're drawing in. So as an example, if we go to line and we set this to a quarter note, right? And we draw in a line here. It's gonna do repetitive notes all with the same velocity. So I'm gonna undo this. If we switch this over to triangle and we draw this in, then the velocity will take the shape of a triangle. I'm gonna undo that. We're gonna push up, uh, let's say 104, right? And we're gonna go to square and we draw in here. The velocity will go up and down, up and down, up and down with every note. Moving on to random, you can guess, the velocity will be random across all notes. So we're gonna go back to freehand. Now to the right of the MIDI note velocity here, we have the play MIDI notes when editing. Let's say we're gonna go to use the grabber tool, right? And as we're selecting notes, it's not gonna, you're not gonna hear the notes. Even if you select here a couple, you can't hear anything. When you have this turned on, anytime you touch a note or select it, it will play that note even if you click and drag and select multiple notes. So this is useful if you're trying to hear what it is that you're editing, but it can be quite annoying every time you do an edit because it's, it's very repetitive. So for now, we're gonna turn that off. To the right of this, we have the mirrored MIDI editing mode. So right now we have it currently turned on. And as, as an example, let's say we're gonna duplicate this, right? And we're gonna move it across here. And both of these clip clips have the same exact name, Drums 03, right? When you have mi mirrored MIDI editing mode turned on, I'm gonna say, grab this one, right? Any edit that you make to this clip will be made to this clip as well. So we're gonna select this one. We're gonna select here. Let's say, select these notes here. And as I move these notes, you're gonna see them move in the other clip and you're gonna see the MIDI, mirrored MIDI editing mode button flash red. So any edit that you make to this one will be done to the other one. And this is useful if you're using loops. So I'm gonna undo that. To the right here, we have the link, timeline, and edit selection. So right now we have it turned off. And if we click here, it will still play from the top, right? It doesn't matter where we click on the timeline, it will play from the top. When we have this turned on, anywhere we click is exactly where it's gonna begin to play. So if you click here, it'll play from here. Click here, it'll play from here. So this is very useful, but sometimes, again, it can be quite annoying. So we're gonna bring it back to the front and turn this off. To the right here, we have the four different modes, shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. And then to the right here, we have the grid. So this little button either shows or hides the grid. So we can turn it off and hide all the grid lines or turn it back on and reveal them all. Now, how those grids are displayed will be determined by the value that we set here. So if it's a half note, it will show a half note grid, 1 16th, and so on and so forth. Now to the right of this, we have nudge. Now nudge allows you to nudge over your MIDI notes that you have selected using the plus or minus on your numerical pad of your keyboard. So as an example, we're gonna set this to, mm, let's say eighth note, right? And we're gonna select these MIDI notes right here. Every time I hit plus, it's gonna nudge it over an eighth note. Hit minus, it's gonna nudge it back an eighth note. If you wanna move them up and down the, the piano or the keys, you're gonna go up and down with your arrow keys. And then again, if we go to one bar and we select these, plus or minus will move them one bar. So it's actually pretty cool. To the right of this, here we have the MIDI input um, display. So let's say we're gonna have a MIDI keyboard here and we hit the C over and over again, it will display what note we're currently playing. And if we play multiple, then it's gonna show us. To the right of this, we have the cursor location. So anywhere you put your cursor, it will display what location it is currently at. Now to the right of this one, we have the selection, edit selection start. So this is gonna tell you where the start of your selection is located, okay? To the right of this, we have the target button. If you have multiple MIDI editor windows open, when you select the MIDI clip, it will be displayed on the window that is targeted. If this button is red, it is currently the targeted window. 
To the right here, we have the drop down menu that allows you to choose what is displayed or hidden in the toolbar. And we could take a couple things out and we can bring them back in. And me personally, I like to have everything shown. So I'm going to make sure everything is checked in. All right, so let's move on here to the bottom where it says tracks. On the right side, we have a drop down arrow and this allows us to specify how we show or hide our tracks. We can also sort them by either name, type or edit group. Now here in the white area, this is a track list. On the far left of every track name, you're going to see a dot or a bulletin. Clicking on this either shows or hides the track in the MIDI editor. What's cool about this is that you can display multiple tracks within the same MIDI editor. So if I click on the one for the keys, I'm going to click here. It will show the keys in the MIDI editor along with the drums. I'm going to go ahead and hide this. Go back to the drums. And to the right side of the track names, you're going to see the pencil icon. This tells us which track we're currently editing. This goes along with what we see here in the display for the toolbar. So it says drums because we're currently editing the drums. If I click on the one for the keys, I'm going to click up here. It's going to show the keys in the MIDI editor and it will also change it here in the display of the toolbar, letting us know that we are currently editing in the keys. Now the question here is, how can you tell which notes belong to which track, especially if they're in the same key? And the answer to that is by color coding your tracks. You can do that by going here to where the ruler's at. You're going to see two buttons that are stacked on top of each other. The top one is your color coder. So I'm going to click here. And this displays all your notes in the same track under one color. So right here we have the keys all in blue. And here we have the drums all in red. And we can confirm that by going here to the track list. And you're going to see the color coding here happen to the left side of the, of the names. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up. And the button right below the color coder is your color coder for your velocity. So I'm going to click this. And you're going to see that all the notes are the same color. The difference here, though, is that some are darker than others. And the way that this works is like this. The darker the color of the note, the higher the value of the velocity. The lighter the color of the note, the lower the value of the velocity. So I'm going to turn this off. Now going here down to the bottom where it says groups, this is where you're going to see all your groups if you have any tracks that are grouped together. And if you want to create new groups, you're going to go ahead and go to the drop down arrow and you can create a new group, display different types of groups or suspend all groups. Make sure that you do not have this here selected where it says all, because if you do, you're going to be editing all your tracks together at the same time. So make sure that this is not selected unless that's what you want to do. Going down here to the very bottom, you're going to see a little tab. And if you don't want to see your tracks or your groups, you're going to go ahead and simply click here and this will collapse that section. So I'm going to come back up here. Now going up here to the ruler where it says bars and beats, if you want to see more than this, you can click here on the drop down arrow and you can add in minutes and seconds, beats and beats and frames, samples, and so on and so forth. So you have a lot of options in here. Obviously here we have the piano roll along with the grid that displays our notes. And then moving along here to the top right, you can see a little button that says A and Z. This right here is your edit keyboard focus. If you know your keyboard shortcuts, this is going to be a very useful tool because when you have this enabled, you don't have to use the extra key like command, option, or control to make your keyboard commands. You can simply, let's say we're going to copy and paste this. So we're going to highlight this. Oh, and I'm going to hit C on the computer keyboard and I'm going to click on the beginning of the fifth bar and I'm going to hit V. So it's a little simple shortcut to doing your keyboard commands, but it's very useful if you know all your keyboard commands. So I'm going to undo that. If I turn it off, even if I press V, it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to leave this enabled. Right below this, we have the zoom in and zoom out for the height. So I'm going to click and hold this. And if I drag it up, it's going to zoom in. If I drag it down, it's going to zoom out. Now, if you want to zoom in width wise, you're going to go down to the bottom and you're going to use a plus or minus. Or you can click and hold this and drag it right to zoom in and drag it left to zoom out. The one on the right here is for your velocity and automation lane. So if you want to zoom in, you can do that as well. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up a little bit so we can talk about the velocity and automation lanes. So this section here is your velocity. You can edit your velocity by using the grabber tool. You can select a single note or you can select multiple notes and edit them at the same time. Now here where it says velocity on the left hand side, you're going to see a little plus sign. You can right click here and here we have a lot of parameters that we can automate. So I'm going to use two examples for this tutorial real quick. So let's say, for example, we're going to go to pitch bend. OK, I'm going to turn off the edit for the drums and we're going to go ahead and use the keys. So let's play it first and listen to what it sounds like originally. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to go to the pencil tool. 
I'm going to use freehand, and I'm going to just go up and down. Very drastic so you can hear the difference. So if you want to make any automations for your MIDI, you can do that. Let's go ahead and play this and listen to what it sounds like. It's pretty cool, right? So we're going to undo that. And let's say we're going to right click here or we can collapse this or right click here and go ahead and select in what we want to see. So I'm going to go to uh, MIDI mute. Let's do that. So I'm going to use a pencil tool, mute it, not mute it, mute it, not mute it, mute it, and not mute it. So let's listen to what that sounds like. So this is how you work the automation lanes in your MIDI editor. You simply right click here, select the, the parameter that you want to edit and go ahead and make those edits with the grabber tool or the pencil tool, whichever you prefer. I'm going to collapse this, 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 and then we leave that. So yeah, guys, we're going to go ahead and conclude the video here. This is the basics of using the MIDI editor inside of Pro Tools. If there's anything else that you would like me to cover or get into more detail, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next session.